Hello, I'm Danny. And I'm Jake. And this is Marvel Talk. Welcome back, everybody, to an exciting episode of Marvel Talk. We're back. Like we said on the last episode, a lot of news to catch up on. But also, we watched Venom Let There Be Carnage. Yes! It was pretty dang good, guys. Pretty dang good. I uh, I liked it a lot. <laughs> uh, just wish there was more. That's that's. I'm, I'm just left wanting more. That's it. That's, that's my overall topic for it. But uh, we'll get into that in a little bit, I think. Uh, should we save that to the end? Yeah, that'll be the big piece for the end of the episode, and uh, for Marvel's What If, Episode 8 is out, but since Episode 9 is next week, we're just going to hold off yep. and, and talk uh, about that. I, I watched Episode 8, um, and it's it's real good. I liked it. Uh, not not as good as um, Episode 7, I don't think, uh, which we still haven't talked about either. We haven't talked about Episode 7, and I loved Episode 7. Which one was uh, but we'll talk. Which one was seven? That, oh, Party Thor. That was a Party Thor. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about uh, that next episode too. Yeah, yeah. I figure we can talk about the last three with that. Yeah. Uh, with that episode. Did you watch so. the Doctor Strange one yet? No, I haven't. Oh. Um, but now I have to because it has to do with this episode, with episode eight. So. Ah, nice. <laughs> yeah. So now I have to go back and check that one out so I can see what what all happens. I will be checking that out soon. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into all this news that we had. Uh, the first thing was, outside of Marvel and DC, we got the trailer for Netflix's Super Crooks. Now, if you guys remember, this was the spinoff show from Jupiter's Legacy, where it's focused more on the villains. Uh, I think you mean replacement show. Uh, uh, excuse me, you're right. Yeah, replacement <laughs> yeah. show. They, uh, they see, uh, poor Jupiter's Legacy. But this one looks good. I don't know. It looks pretty pretty solid. Um I, I don't know why we couldn't have both uh, is kind of my main thing, but it still looks good. You know, I, I like the action. The action looks really good. Um, it's like yeah. early seasons of uh, My Hero type stuff, One Punch Man kind of vibe uh, going on with a lot of it. Um, also some Tiger and Bunny kind of vibes. Mm. Uh, sh- yeah, I shout out, that. Shout out to that classic anime that nobody's watched except for me apparently uh, <laughs> uh my big surprise was that it was in japanese for the trailer yeah that was crazy um which i'm kind of down with i i could watch a lot more of just the japanese version that's tight yeah i'm fine with that no no big uh, yeah. problems oh uh, yeah pretty action-packed and that's drop in november 25th so that's already next month yeah so uh let's just hope it doesn't get canceled like uh, Jupiter's Legacy, right? Yeah, or if they tell the story like in one season or something, like maybe right. they'll just try and keep it a little bit uh, shorter, which would be cool. I'm I'm down with just a one season deal. Um, that's what all the uh, what's it called have been doing. Um, oh, you know the the spooky shows uh, like Haunting of Hill House and, and the Bly Manor one. And then they just uh, they just released Midnight Mass, which was really spooky and good. So yeah, I hear good things about that one. Yeah, um, real good take on a on a vampire story. Very good stuff. Uh, it's pretty interesting. I liked it. But if this show can be like that, where it's just a one one and done season type of deal, I'd be way into that. Like that, that would be uh, pretty cool. Yeah, if that's the original intention, I'd be fine with that. Well, I think that's pretty much it outside of uh, the big two. So, oh well, I mean, uh, Transformers: uh, Rise oh. of the Beasts. More vehicles have been spotted on set. Uh, that's about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Optimus Prime has been seen under tarps. Uh, uh, Mirage has been seen as a car. Uh, uh, oh, they had the evil truck show up. That's right. the The evil truck popped up. Oh, um, okay. Let's see. Uh, we also have off-road Camaro Bumblebee, um, who's got like a big old roof rack thing going on, which looks neat. Um, here, I'll I'll pop some links in the deal here, and I'm like, yeah, they're cars. They they look like cars. That's <laughs> um, is kind of where I'm at. And there's been some pretty crazy shakeups going on right now at Paramount because um, all their all their stuffs being restructured. 
so past Rise of the Beasts, there's not really any good telling of what's going to happen movie-wise with stuff. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I don't know. It's all kind of up in the air uh, with a lot of it at this point. So we'll see. I don't know. If Rise of the Beast does well, they'll probably keep making movies. So, Well, all right, man. Are we ready to move on to some DC talk? Oh, yeah. Let's do some DC talk. Pre, pre-fandom pre hype. Yes, right here. yes. Uh, uh, we did get the announcement for the 16th of this month that DC fandom is happening yet again. And I'm super excited because the first one was such a good time. Oh, yeah. DC fandom one was like a really good at-home convention type deal. Very, very good stuff. I was I was very happy with Fandom 1. And just the fact that Fandom 2 is going to have, like, just Shazam everywhere. Yes! <laughs> Give me more. <laughs> Give me all the Shazam. I'm down. Yeah, I'm excited. They got a lot of stuff uh, in the works right now. Uh, so that they're going to be showing off a bunch of stuff, I can imagine. Um, probably, like, the first piece of news, or the earliest piece of news we got, which was they're doing a spinoff on HBO Max for Black Canary. Yeah, I guess I, people mm, want that. I don't know. I honestly don't know who this. This is like <laughs> the same request I had last podcast of I honestly want to know things about why people enjoy Birds of Prey because <laughs> I don't know who asked for the Black Canary movie. I mean, I guess it's cool that they're doing movies on characters that aren't just like the Big Seven. Like, I guess that's a neat idea, but just comic booky version would be cool. It'd be great. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't really care about the Birds of Prey movie, uh, but I'd love to see the comic book one. And then there's talks of uh, I I remember there being some reference to like Green Arrow being in it or something. Well, yeah, uh, people were trying to fan cast who would play Green Arrow in the movie. Well, it's Charlie Hunnam. Like that's that's got to be the guy, right? Like he's been a he's been asked in interviews before, right? About yeah, it. like I think I think there was rumbles of him being it when Snyder was still around. Yeah, I remember he was in a group interview for his, like his the the last movie he did, mm-hmm. and like they they brought up like people want to see you as Green Arrow. I think they pulled up like a Boss Logic edit, and he was like, "Oh, I'd be great to play. I, I would be super down." Yeah, like and he'd be a great fit for it too. I think I think yeah. he'd pull it off really well. Yeah, hopefully that that would be pretty neat um, if if they can pull it off. That would probably be the most hype part of the movie for me. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes me just want a Green Arrow movie over yeah. a Black Canary movie. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the times are what they are. So I mean, it makes sense going to HBO Max, right? Yeah. Right, instead of the theaters. So that that's a smart move on their end. Well, moving on to other stuff. Uh, we got information about the next season of The Flash. Which is, again, starting off with a five-episode crossover event called Armageddon. And uh, we have the cast of pretty much the main heroes that are going to be in it. And it's going to have uh, Batwoman. Ray Palmer's coming back, so that's cool. We're going to see our boy reprise his role. Nice. Oh, so we get uh, Brandon Routh again. Yeah. Nice. Oh, yay. That's cool. That, that makes yeah, me Yeah, because I don't happy. think he died. I think he just left the team. Yeah, I think I think that's what ends up happening. Yeah, he just... I watched, like, a clip of that, of him leaving, and it's he's just he just leaves. He just walks away. Okay. Yeah, so not too bad. Cool. Uh, we're getting Black Lightning... And then uh, Alex Danvers is going to be in there, which is um, Supergirl's sister. Oh, tight. Yeah. That'll be cool. Uh, we're getting Mia Queen, which is great because we haven't seen her since uh, the last episode of Arrow. Yeah, what what happened to her spinoff show? Like, did that just, like, die? That's not, it's not happening? Like it, The last episode of Arrow was uh, a backdoor pilot to, um, I guess it would be called Green Arrow and the Canaries. And it was going to be set in her timeline. And it just, yeah, they never did anything with it. Wow. Yeah, that would have been great. It probably would have been more interesting to watch than um, uh, anything The Flash has had happening recently. Um, Yeah, yeah, just uh, watching those clips. Oh, boy. (laughs) Uh, Lightsabers. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, lightsabers, lightning uh, shurikens, uh, a bunch of other I, YouTube effects stuff going on. Yeah, I don't know what's happening over there, but I, I'm not, I'm not gonna check it out. That's okay. Yeah. Also, super weird that Bart Allen's not Barry's grandson, but it's his son. Yeah, that's a little weird too. Very odd choices all around. All yes, around. Yes. Uh, um, just there's so many clips where I was like, I'm glad I'm not watching The Flash anymore, which. And part of it is sad to say, but, uh, you know, it, that's just the road it took. 
Uh, we're getting more Ryan Choi in here, and uh, I believe the last time we saw him was Crisis. Okay, I'm I'm down for Ryan Choi. I'm I'm all into that. That's cool. Yeah, I wonder uh, if there's going to be a passing of the torch for the Atom. Oh, I could see that. That would be tight. Um, to finally see a version of Ryan Choi become the Atom would be cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, any version, <laughs> yeah. Snyder, Snyder or TV would be cool. Um, and I'm just I'm just happy because it's it's my boy Kevin from uh, Supernats. It's it's uh it's the boy, the Prophet Man. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen Supernatural at all. No, I haven't. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. He plays a really good part in that, where he's a he's a prophet of the lo- of the Lord's of the Lord's stuff, and it's uh, the same actor who plays uh, both characters. So nice. Yeah, and he's a really good actor. Uh, then they're gonna have Reverse Flash, played of course by Tom Cavanaugh, because they don't want to bring the other guy back for some reason. Whatever that's about. Uh, yeah. Damien Dark is coming in, which is a surprise. That's gonna be interesting. Yeah, because he died in season four of Arrow, and then he got yeah, he pulled was... out of the timeline for Legends season uh, season two, I think. But I don't remember where they leave off with with those villains that got brought back. But yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, and I like that actor. He's he's a good actor. And then finally, we got the reveal for who the villain is going to be for this crossover, and it's Despero. Oh yeah, I remember seeing the news about Despero. That's and thinking that the casting was really weird. Oh yeah, it's the the, the Irishman um, from Doctor Who. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think. Wait, who is this man? Tony Curran. Yeah, he played um, uh, Vincent Van Gogh in the one episode. Uh, they're probably just gonna CGI him up, so he'll most likely just be doing a voice. Um, yeah. Because Despero is a pretty wild looking, wild looking character. Uh, unless they do some cool face prosthetic stuff, that that'll be kind of neat. I'm I'm interested to see it. Despero's kind of on the same level as uh, Lobo, where he's just kind of like an international bo- or an interstellar bounty hunter guy. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I know nothing of this character. Oh, but he can do mind control, illusions, using the third eye on his head. Uh, okay, so he's got some other stuff going on. But I know for a while there he was he was in the same league as uh, Lobo for a minute. That would be a neat way to bring Lobo in. Uh, has Lobo been on this? I don't know. Is, is no, he Lobo. Lobo was in the uh, Krypton show. That's. Weird. I think they. I think they went with that, right? He was in a. I. I think yeah, Krypton. Yeah, it shows him right here on the Krypton series. They were gonna do a spinoff for Lobo, but that never went anywhere. Yeah, that's a bummer. Cause Lobo's great. I always love Lobo. I could do a Lobo movie. Yeah. So maybe I'll hop back in a Flash just to watch the crossover. Okay. It's an interesting cast that they picked, too. The fact that there's no uh, Supergirl in there, or really any other of the legends. Well, because Supergirl's leaving, right? Like, she's gone? Like, uh, This sh- is her final season. Oh, uh, okay. I, th- I think it's still going. I don't keep up anymore with the CW schedule. Uh, I know Black Lightning's over, over. Okay. And no no Superman either, which is that's a bummer, but Yeah, I I'm kind of okay with them keeping him separate though for now. Like Yeah. Let let him build up his show and then uh yeah. and then it's all good. Oh, it looks like there's three episodes left of Supergirl. Oh, uh, okay. Uh there's Yeah, for I forgot they revealed the Guardian or like the new a new Guardian. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, it looks like it's there's three episodes titled The Gauntlet magical thinking and the final episode will be called hope for tomorrow Mm. so this is ending before the crossover is going to happen yeah october 12th is the final episode of supergirl um oh yeah i see right here yeah if anybody wants to go watch that that's cool i think it's a bummer that supergirl's ending and batwoman's still going but you know yeah with um uh, they casted somebody new in batwoman yeah to be uh to be a uh Whatever her name is, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> the main lady. Um, they recasted what's her face. Oh yeah, they it. did recast Ruby Rose. Yeah. Yeah, they recasted um, Ruby Rose. Uh, oh, that's what I'm thinking. They're bringing in Poison Ivy. Oh, I wow that I've not even seen it anywhere. That's crazy. What? Yeah. <laughs> Do they show the new lady? Uh, who who plays Batwoman? Yeah, is she in it? No, yeah, she did all of season two. Ruby Rose was only in season one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but so not not the not the girl that like is not 
Ruby Rose's character, but took over. Oh, oh, like, the the new the new the new um, new lady. Yeah, the one who's right. actually playing Ruby Rose's character. Yeah, this, is I she? I don't think so. Well, here's this teaser. Oh yeah, no, it's still it's still the the one lady who just replaced. I guess Ruby that's Rose. Poison Ivy they're showing. It's starting October thirteenth. Okay, I'm watching a teaser. Oh, we got the Mad Hatter. Is that what this hat thing is? This top hat. It was supposed to premiere this month, or it was supposed to premiere last month. Wow. Oh. Literally oh yeah, it is. It's just anything. it's just straight up the Mad Hatter. That's 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 who it is. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess if they have the Alice villain in season one, it makes sense to do the Mad Hatter in a different season. Uh, oh yeah, and then we've got like Lucius Fox's kid is a Batman person now. Yeah, yeah, it's I I don't know how they're getting the the numbers on that show. Did it come out? I don't even know. I don't care. <laughs> no, it's, it's season three is in like two weeks. Oh, okay. There's, I don't care. <laughs> don't care. Yep. I'm not going to watch it. No one here is going to watch it. That's um, the right answer. <laughs> so that's it. Yeah. Well, moving on to something we will watch. Uh, we got the teaser for Injustice. Yeah. Oh, man. Both teasers. Woo. Yes. Did- yeah. There's the Red Band trailer, too. Yep. Uh, yeah. I think the first teaser was okay, uh, but the Red Band trailer is the good one. That's that's the one that I was like, yeah, that's it. That's the one. So I, I'm pretty stoked for it. It's looking pretty good. Yeah, I'm ready for it, man. Um, I only know a little bit about Injustice, but I'm excited to see it animated because, you know, these movies can get pretty brutal when they want to. Yeah, and uh, I think it'll be interesting to see them take the story of the video game and condense it down to like an hour and forty-five. Like, mm-hmm. it'll it'll be pretty neat. I'm I'm pretty stoked on it because uh, I don't want to play through the whole video game just to get the story of it. Because I really I, I dig the story. I just want to be able to like watch it. So it'll be cool to see it this way. Uh, I have heard some people, like my buddy Franklin, was like, "Oh, I'm not a big fan of how." Um, uh, like I'm not the biggest fan of of um, how it's not Kevin Conroy or George Newbern or whatever uh, right. the guys who played them in the video game and I'm like yeah, yeah. I could see that um, but the voices they did pick sound good like they don't sound bad well, I think I think Kevin Conroy's just done done right I think so I I don't think he's doing any more of them yeah because for the animated universe uh, it's not him. It's the new guy that's playing Batman. Yeah, the guy who's been playing it since Young Justice, right? I think it's that guy. Yeah, yeah. Batman is Justin Hartley, who we'll all remember as our good friend Green Arrow from Smallville. That's uh, you mean, you mean Superman. Uh, Superman. Yeah, yeah, Superman. Sorry, did I say Batman? I meant yeah. Superman. Batman is Anson Mount, Mount, uh, who I believe is the guy who's been doing Batman for a long time. Um, oh, wait, maybe not. No, it's uh, Captain Pike. From uh, Star Trek, the new Star Trek shows. Oh. Huh. Okay, so they're just going with a different cast. Yeah. Oh, he was Black Bolt in the Inhumans TV show. I forgot about that. That's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, that is him. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's Black Bolt man right there. That's, uh... Yeah. yeah. Oh, Laura Bailey's Lois Lane. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, uh, our, our boy, uh, our boy Yuri Lowenthal, uh, Spider-Man, is gonna play Flash, Shazam, and Mirror Master. Wow. Nice. Working triple duty. Also, Kevin, Kevin Pollock as, a Joker is perfect, by the way. Like, holy moly. <laughs> like, he sounds so good in the trailer. Um, yeah. Great, great casting choices all around, I think, for most of this. I mean, I'm also kind of a, a fan of the fact that they are all different voices because it kind of you know alternate reality stuff it works i think it works yeah yep oh janet varney's gonna be wonder woman that's cool yeah super stoked uh this is coming out i think on the 19th of this month if i'm not mistaken oh wow that's really soon uh, cool to i'm down to come back and do a video about that that'd be tight yeah october 19th yeah it's gonna be on it should be on hbo max as well as uh picking it up on blu-ray cool I wonder if we're going to get another trailer in DC Fandom before it comes out or something. That would be neat. Oh, that would be great. I would love that. Yeah. Nice. And uh, I'm really hoping we're going to get some Aquaman 2 stuff because we did yeah. get those photos of the new suits. Yeah. Uh, I, I think they look fine. <laughs> um, the black suit looks cool, I guess. 
I, I like the, the description of it being that the reason that it's black and scaly like that is it's based off of like how Manta Ray's skin is is developed yeah. or whatever. And I was like, mm-hmm. that's that's a cool idea. I dig it. That's pretty neat. Yeah. So, and I'm pretty sure that's just the 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 classic ones just from the first movie, right? Yep. Yeah, I think it's the same suit as the as movie number one. Which I appreciate. I, I always like when superhero movies don't have to create new costumes when they don't need them. Um, exactly. Like if yeah. the suit works, just keep it, and that's great. Well, especially the suit in Aquaman, right? Because there's actually some history with it. Yeah, like it wouldn't make sense to change it, like going forward. Because that is a suit worn by the first king of Atlantis, who we got casting for, which was a uh, Vincent Reagan. Yes. Yeah, nice. It's a nice pick. Yeah, not bad. Uh, I'm I'm liking everybody they're casting so far. It's it's good stuff. I think did they announce like three different people? Yeah, there there was uh, two other actresses that they announced too, uh, along with him. Yeah, I just don't remember. I think the they... the only pick I'm still like just I don't like is the guy they picked for Namor. That's it. Like that. I... Or no, that's that's going to be in that... Black Panther two. <laughs> yeah, that's the. <laughs> oh my god, my brain. Where it's a little, did that? Little too close, where did yeah. I go? <laughs> Woo. Yeah, okay, never mind. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. Uh, oh, they confirmed uh, Randall Park's coming back. Cool. Tight. I'm into that. Yeah. Ooh, Janie Zhao, the, one of the ladies who got it, it announced, is going to be playing Stingray. Mm-hmm. And then the other guy is going to be playing Atlan. Vincent Reagan's going to be playing Atlan. I don't know yeah. who a, either of those characters are from the books. Well, At- Atlan's the first uh, king of Atlantis. Oh, is he? Oh, okay, okay. Did he play him in the first movie? I don't think we saw him in the first movie. He's not the guy who came up in the hologram? That's not the first king of Atlantis? Oh, I guess that's just a king of Atlantis. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I don't know. That's a good That's a good question. That's weird. Eh, whatever. Um, that's, that just means time for a rewatch before yep. uh, this comes out. Let's see. DC Comics Stingray. What is... What, oh! Oh, it's a, okay. Oh, wait. This is a Marvel character. It must be a new original character for this movie. I, I would... Imagine, based on the age of this character, or this actress, um, Miss Janny Zhao here. Okay, the, this could end up being Ray Park's daughter. Born in As 92, still... she could, or a wife, possibly? So maybe Stingray's like a, a thing that uh, Ray Park's character comes up with? And like she wears the suit or something? That makes sense. It could be something like that. Um, well, yeah, well, yeah. Remember at the end of Aquaman, or one of the post-credit scenes, I guess it was, right? He uh, rescues uh, Black Manta. Yeah. And then they have the tech to work with, so maybe they make a suit based off of the Atlantean tech. Yeah, could be that. And Black Manta's back, confirmed. He's he's in there, so nice. I would not, uh, I would not be uh, surprised if that happened. That would be pretty pretty neat. Yeah. Oh, we also got that set photo of uh, Patrick Wilson uh, in the middle of a desert area, it looks like. Oh, yeah, with, like, long hair or whatever. Um, yeah, he's got the, the scrangly beard going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Like he's been in prison for a long time. Maybe that's, like, a special prison spot they have for Atlanteans or something. Yeah, he's, like, an exile or something. Yeah, like, no water, none. You can't have any. But looks good. I, I'm I'm down. The, the stealth suit kind of is just neat. I don't know. Um, I remember they were talking about, I, I, weren't they talking about him having more blonde hair in this? I, I, yeah, yeah. They said his hair was going to be blonde in the movie, but looking at that set photo, it's, it, you can't even tell the difference. I, I guess I see highlights of it towards like the bottom. Yeah. I, but that could just be the lighting too though. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's super weird. Um, I'm curious if Atlan is going to be like the main villain of this, because uh, it's called the Lost Kingdom, and maybe Atlan Ooh. is still around somewhere. That could uh, be something deep below the ocean or something. Um, maybe it'll be a Hollow Earth movie. Maybe That'd this be cool. Will, maybe this will be a movie about Hollow Earth. Maybe that's the maybe the desert place is inside the Hollow Earth, and then they'll also find King Kong and Godzilla, and that'll be great. As they watch uh, LeBron James win the Space Jam Yeah, match. there it is. Yeah. There, there it is. <laughs> All full circle. There it is. Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> there there you go, guys. That's that's our predictions for Aquaman 2. Uh, you heard it here first. Um, there it is. <laughs> yeah. We still have a ways to go. Uh, December 2022. 
Yeah, it's going to be a while. Um, but knowing how much special effects work the first movie took, uh, that makes sense. We got another logo tease for the Flash movie, as that's still filming. Yeah. And um, uh, people are saying Red Death for this one. Yeah, I'm I'm curious if that's what it's actually going to be. I, I don't know. Um, I've seen some other people saying that this might be this universe's version of just Reverse Flash. Uh, so I don't know. We're... we're We'll, we'll see what happens, I guess. Yeah, because it'd be pretty bold to get Red Death yeah, this early to, on. To that, that's like, I don't know, man. That That's like the complaint that people had about using Doomsday so early. I'm like, you're, you're one Flash movie in and you're already bringing in the dark Batman universe <laughs> from, from yeah. the comic books. I mean, it makes sense. I get it. Because that that storyline made a lot of money for the comics, like that sold like gangbusters, and they made yeah. action figures of all of the characters. So I get it, but I also am like, too soon? Maybe I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It'd be interesting. Uh, it'd be cool if it's Reverse Flash. I mean, the the logo itself is Keaton's Batman suit, right? Yep, uh, with with the spray painted symbol on the front. Um, so which which is. Yeah. Similar to how Red Death Suit looks, which makes me wonder: Are we just bringing back another old Batman to make him a bad guy? Is that what we're doing? Is Michael Keaton Batman just going to be a villain? Like, I hate that. Like that, I don't like doing that. Stop it! Knock it off! <laughs> like you did it with Kevin Conroy, now you're doing it with Michael Keaton. Get out of here! Stop! Stop tarnishing my good Batman actors! Dang it! I'm over it. <laughs> just let him be Batman. Yeah, I mean, or if anything, it's just uh, good promo stuff. Yeah, and then uh, for the yeah for HBO Max stuff, uh, we got confirmation of another spinoff show for the Batman, and that's going to be for Penguin. He's going to be getting his own show. Uh, all right, that's that's kind of how uh, that's that's all I got to say. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, weird. You know, one movie's spawning two shows, and then go from there. And it's I not guess. even out. Yeah. <laughs> like, at least the Suicide Squad came out. Like, that's fine. But, like, God, just let, let the movies happen first. Yeah. I mean, it'll be cool if, if it's still going to be uh, Colin Farrell. Yep. Because, you know, I, I'm a big, I'm, I'm a fan of Colin Farrell, so. Yeah. I am excited to see what he's going to do with Penguin and then see whatever his spinoff show is going to be, I guess. And and from hearing that Penguin is going to be a pretty minor role um, in the Batman, I'm, I'm pretty stoked to see how the show expands on him. Uh I wonder if it's going to be a prequel. Like, maybe we'll see a little bit of lead-up into him becoming, like, the big guy mm. or whatever. I don't know. It would be really cool if it's a Penguin show, but Batman's allowed to show up. I yeah. I, would, I would like that a lot. If they're able to just allow Batman to just be in a show, in a show like, <laughs> that's revolutionary. What a, what a concept. <laughs> kind of like how uh, in Ayer's Suicide Squad, right? He just showed up for just two scenes. Yeah, and that was great. I was like, oh, yeah, that's how you interconnect it. That's perfect. That I, I loved that. I, I thought that's... I still think that's one of my favorite parts of that movie is when Batman's just in it. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, oh, yeah, no, this is this is a universe where he's around. I'm I'm all for that kind of stuff. Just keep keep doing the, the tiny cross-references to other things, and I'm all in it. And then, uh, finally, for HBO Max stuff, uh, we got some set photos, little snippets for Peacemaker, as uh, that's coming out relatively soon, I think, right? Yeah, uh, we're definitely going to get a big a big push for it at Fandom. Like, that's that's one of their, like, main things they're bringing up. So, uh, release date for this just says January. Okay. Doesn't have yeah. a specific date or anything yet, so... Yeah, and we had a look at uh, another character that's going to be popping up, which was um, Vigilante. Yeah. Yeah, and he looks great. He looks perfect. Like, th that's exactly what I wanted him to look like. Like, I was like, you, you did it. You just took the comic suit and you put it in the show. Awesome. That's that's great. great. Like, perfect. Yeah, big step up from the uh, Arrow version. Yeah. So Yeah, which, I, which you looking at the side-by-side -side the other day, I was like, Oh wow, yeah, it really did look like that on CW, didn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty stoked for Peacemaker and Vigilante in this show. I think it's going to be a good time. I also like the actor they picked for Vigilante. I, I he's he's pretty great. So I've seen him in some other stuff, and and he's he's got a good he's got good acting chops. He's he's pretty solid. 
Yeah, and we see some of the uh, people that worked there uh, in the in the Suicide Squad movie. Like, what was his name? John. Yeah, there's like the big guy who was the King Shark uh, bodysuit guy. Um, like the guy with the beard uh, was King Shark for all the physical oh. stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so he got to do double duty in that movie, which was kind of neat. Um, and nice. then like the blonde lady uh, was from the movie also, I believe. Um, yeah, I think she was in the comms uh, talking to everybody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think the other two assistant people were in the movie too much. Yeah, and uh, if, if we remember at the end of that movie, right, they're the ones that confirmed that he was still alive in the hospital. Yep. Yeah, and they weren't too happy about that. No, they so. were like, we gotta keep working with this dude? No! Yeah. <laughs> um, I love that uh, What's-His-Face from frickin' uh, X-Files is on this. Um, he's right here. I'm looking at the picture of him. Uh, Robert Patrick. That's his name. Having Robert Patrick come back is always fun. He was the Liquid Terminator in Terminator 2. Oh, cool. Yeah, so that'll be fun. Yeah. I don't know who he's going to play, but thats he's always a good time to have around. Oh, he's going to play Augie Smith, an original career, cre- character created by James Gunn. <laughs> cool. Uh, so he's a James Gunn character. Yep, tight. Uh, so that's, that's what that says to me. Okay. All right. That uh, works for me. I'm down. Uh, and then the last thing that I have, which we'll probably see at, at Fandom as well, is we got the casting for Lex Luthor and Super Pets, and it's going to be Mark Marin. Oh, yeah. Is, uh, that's a pretty good choice. Yeah, I remember I remember seeing that, and I was like, yeah, Mark Marin will be a good Lex. He's he's a good actor. I like him. Oh, okay, the movie comes out May. Okay, so we might not get anything. I mean, we might get another teaser, and that's cool. It's, it's an animated yeah. movie, so it just depends on if they've got a few more scenes uh, done or not. Um, and uh, that wraps up the DC news uh, that I saw out there. We've got a couple offshoot DC things. I, I just posted oh. them in our chat a little earlier. Um, oh, is that what it was? Yeah, so we post their, they've released their first look at The Sandman, um, which oh, is a right. Neil Gaiman story, uh, but it was adapted into a graphic novel. Um, yes. And that was a DC Comics graphic novel, as far as I remember, I think. Yeah, I forgot they were doing this. Yeah, so they're they're doing a few different versions of Sandman right now. Like, there's like a radio drama version that just came out too. Um, and I've never read the actual story of it, so I don't know. Like, I don't know what happens. Uh, so I have no idea. Um, I think I've always heard good things about Sandman. Yeah, I've always heard it's a very interesting story. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know this was a uh, a DC's. Uh, series oh wow this dude looks just like the comic book whoa okay that's cool (laughs) dang they nailed that he looks just like the comic book design nice that's great wow that's cool okay yep cool and yeah no no date on that just coming soon yep just coming soon uh first look so it, it looks it looks pretty good from that first little bit that little teaser so i'm pretty stoked um I guess I will have to find the graphic novel and read it before the mo- the show comes out. Um, the other trailer I shared uh, is the prequel to Zack Snyder's film, Army of the Dead. This is Army of Thieves, baby. Okay, I was thinking, like, it was just reading the title. I was like, I guess it's going to connect, but... Uh... Yep, it's a okay. full-on prequel. They even have, like, a tiny clip in the trailer of, like, zombies eating people oh, on see television it. and stuff. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm pretty down. I, I still haven't seen Army of Thieves yet or Army of Dark Army of the Dead. So I gotta I gotta actually watch it. Um, yeah, I know that's that's like two and a half hours, right? Uh, yeah, it's a long one. Uh, yeah, but I do want to check it out um, just for okay. the impressiveness of them replacing an entire actor uh, throughout the film. Yeah, that, that's still crazy. Uh, they they filmed they filmed all that in one day, I think. Yeah, like uh, all her alternate shots and takes and stuff, like. Mm-hmm. That's nuts, and and it looks good. Like she looks like she fits into every scene she's in. Like yeah, they got the lighting down really good. In yeah, those shots, pretty much nailed it. <laughs> Mister Brad Cage. <laughs> oh, this is like great. It's cool. They got the actress that played uh, Domino in Deadpool two. Okay, so yeah, it's just a heist movie during the beginnings of a zombie apocalypse. Okay, yeah, 
That's cool. Um, I is the blonde guy in Army of the Dead? Is he on the team? I don't remember. Oh yeah, that is him. Oh cool. So this is kind of like his prequel story. Yeah. Okay. Eh, neat. I mean, yeah, that's the same hairstyle, so it, look, it looks like it. Yeah. I mean, I'm all down for Zack Snyder to do just a heist movie. This, the, I mean, it looks pretty good. Like, it looks like a good adventure film. It's just really interesting, like how fast this came. This is coming out after the first one. Yeah, that too. Like that got fast tracked. Twenty ninth of this month. What? Mm hmm. Oh my yeah, god. Halloween weekend. Wow. That was really quick. Because Army of Dead was last year, right? I I thought it was this year. Uh, was it this year? Uh, you know, it's it's just been a blur. <laughs> time has been a what blur. Is, what is time? Yeah, it, what, what it, was, is... it was this year. Yeah, that's crazy. Wow. Okay. Yeah, May. That's right. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Back to back in the same year. That's nuts. That's cool. I'm, I'm into that. Yeah, I wonder when they shot that. I guess that had to be... Maybe during... Back to back. Yeah, I don't... Okay. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I'm down to I'm down to dive into those films. Yeah, that that'll be a good time. Right. I'm curious if if we should watch Army of Thieves first and then Army of the Dead. The I don't dead. I don't know. Like maybe mm. we should just wait for the second one to come out and then watch them that way. Yes, I sometimes I find release order better than chronological order. Sometimes. Yeah, I don't know. And also, I got to throw out here. This isn't a news item, but I just got to throw it out. Uh. Green Lantern is still in the top ten of Netflix's uh, top picks. I'm just, oh, just right. throwing it out there. It it has consistently stayed there for almost a month, and I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, why are people watching uh, watching that now? I don't know, but I'm into it. I'm like, it's, just just keep checking it out, guys. Like, yeah, show Warner Brothers that we want a new one. I want to sit Madison down so we can watch it together because um, it's pretty great. I know a lot of other people have problems with it, but I've always loved it. So, oh, it turned ten this year. That's right. Oh, maybe that's why. Well, either way, I'm I'm excited that it's back on top. Well, with that, that's gonna wrap up DC talk until the 16th when Fandom happens. Which, yep. Uh, the episode after that event's gonna be nothing but DC, so that's gonna be exciting. Yeah, that'll be a full DC episode, guys. Look forward to that. So let's go switch on back to some Marvel talk here. Uh, we did get a bunch of news, uh, mainly and mostly MCU stuff going on here. Uh, just first thing first to get out of the way, uh, Ironheart's going to be in Black Panther 2, which is All right. fine, I guess. I guess that means her suit's going to be vibranium tech instead of uh, Stark tech. I mean, it's yeah. the thing that makes the most sense logically um, for them to do, so I get it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess with, with Iron Man no longer... Uh, being a big presence in the MCU, you can't really say, like, yeah, she found an old Iron... Oh, I guess she could still find an old Iron Man suit and uh, just retrofit it to herself. That's what she does in the comic books. Like, that's that's the exact origin story of what she does, is she finds an old Iron Man suit, and then uh, Iron Man... Or Tony Stark's AI talks to her through the suit. Like, there's an AI version of Tony Stark that was like a hologram. Because this is after a point in the comics when Tony also died there... So he wasn't around anymore, and he was just a hologram walking around mm -hmm. and doing stuff. Um, so it, it would be totally possible for them to do that, but it doesn't sound like that's what they're going to do. Yeah, it's just a news piece. It's literally just what if for me. It doesn't it's not the multiverse stuff that I care about. Is kind of where I'm at. exactly. Yep. Yeah. I I'm 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 on the other train right now, which is the multiverse train, um, and I don't really care about anything else but that. And then uh, I thought it was going to be this year because it, may, it would make sense because now it's October. Mm -hmm. But uh, they're doing a Werewolf by Night Halloween special on Disney Plus, but it's for 2022. Oh, it's next year. Yeah, similar to the Guardian, Guardians Christmas special, mm. right? Like it would make sense for this year, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's next year too, right? Yeah, that's cool. They're they're digging deep for for that one for the Halloween special. Yeah, that's cool. They're like, oh, we got all this other property we can use. Let's try some of it. Like that's mm -hmm. cool. There's a rumor for Doctor Strange 2, and it was linked with, like, some really bad, look like, faked image. Oh, artwork. yeah, I don't know if I buy this that <laughs> much. If you guys care about spoilers, skip this part. I, I don't buy it. Like, way more fake than the Spider-Man stuff. Like, this just looks bad. All I'm saying is that any leaks that have happened in the past few years, I don't buy them as full leaks. I buy them as 
marketing. I just can't imagine that kind of stuff getting out and people not being fired. Well, did you see that? I just saw it last night. There was that photo Tom Holland posted where he was, I guess, outside of the set area. He was doing the pose in the Spider-Man meme what? where they're all pointing at each other. What? Yeah. On his Instagram? Was that where this was? I saw it in an article. But yeah, like he was wearing his mask and he was just doing the pose. But it's just him in the frame. Mm. So it's just like, is he teasing that this is? Oh, wow. Look at this whole thing where he's uh, he's posting about Venom on his Instagram story. Isn't that fun? Yeah, he's just having fun with it now. Oh, he's got to be. It's... Because that is, just I mean, ridiculous. do you remember the uh, the poster leak he quote unquote did for uh, Endgame? Yeah, his his fake yeah. leak that he did. Yeah, yeah, that's that's why any leak that I see happen from a big company at this point, I'm like that. Ah. And back to the Doctor Strange do stuff. That's a little too much, I think. For I don't really buy it. The spoilery image supposedly it's like super low res pre visual stuff, and I'm like, yeah, maybe. I mean, I do buy that to an extent because that's what. Marvel has been doing is they don't really write a script first. They do all their previs for all the action scenes first, and then they write a script around it. Like that's like and they work around. Yeah, it. yeah that's that's yeah. like been their process for the last phase of movies. Um, has been just doing that because you know visual effects these days take a long time to make. So it's get ahead of that faster than the script, and you're going to be in a better spot. I could buy it potentially being a thing. I don't know. There's been some previs for other scenes that have looked this this low quality before. Uh, moving on, uh, we got there's a, another rumor for Moon Knight, and uh, this show just recently finished production as well. Yes, and the rumor is that Mark Ruffalo is going to be in there. Oh, like as, as Bruce Banner, right? Yeah, and the rumor is he is going to be pulling sort of a recruitment role, similar to I guess Nick Fury does mm. with the original Avengers. Okay. Yeah, that's that's fine. Yeah, I think that's fitting for for Bruce. Yeah, yeah, that would work. Um, especially considering where he was at at the end of Shang Chi. Uh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense to have him be in that role. Yeah, I think so too. Yep. So I wonder if he's going to be doing the same thing then in She Hulk. Yeah, I don't. Know. That that would make sense. Um, I would hope that at least in She Hulk we get a couple scenes of him changing <laughs> in some way. I don't know. Um. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, I, I I would like at least one scene where he's full Hulk in that one. Maybe even have it set a little bit before Shang Chi, and then after that, so we can see like the transition point or something. My my worry is that it's going to be like a power transfer deal where he gives the powers to oh. She Hulk, and like he's just not Hulk anymore. That's what I'm worried about more than anything else. Yeah, I hope not. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would be a bummer. Um. I mean, I guess that that could work if they're still sticking with the uh, same origin. Yep. We'll see, I yeah. guess. We'll right. see what happens. Yeah, we'll see. See what's going on there. Uh, hey, we got some video game stuff for Marvel. Uh, quite a handful, actually. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, got a, uh, 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 we got a couple trailers for uh, new games. Well, one of the games that we got at... I forget which, which streaming event, but uh, we got to look at Midnight Suns. Did you get a look at this one? Yes, yes, I did. That's the one that's got a uh, Wolverine and Doctor Strange in it and stuff. Um, yeah, it's got Blade. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it's gonna be like a like sort of like Ultimate Alliance. Yeah, this is the people that did SOCOM games. It's a tactical RPG. Yeah, we did get some gameplay stuff. There's like a card system on how you use your attacks. A card system. Yeah, so like the you have cards in your hand, I guess, for for your characters, and like those are the attacks that you use. Oh, okay. That's less exciting than I thought it was going to be, gameplay. -wise. Yeah, because oh. yeah, it was just a CG trailer for the review. Yeah, I thought, I like, thought well, it was, what kind of game is I it? I thought it was going to be nice and action based and like, man, okay. <laughs> There's other characters like Ghost Rider is going to be there, Captain America, Captain Marvel, Iron Man, and uh, two characters I don't know that I know are story heavy for this. Um, hmm. Oh, Magic's in there too. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, this says it's going to be. Using properties like Midnight Suns, Avengers, X Men, and the Runaways. Okay. Yeah, so we'll have characters from all three of those, or all four of those. Um, yeah, uh, they're all wearing, they're all rocking like matching suits. Yeah, the, like the gold and black. I thought those looked. I nice. like the suit designs. It's it's pretty good stuff. Yeah. I mean, I will say I'm surprised that they're doing this 
instead of just a typical like hack and slash kind of game. Yeah, this could have just been another um, Ultimate Alliance type of deal. Uh, so at least they're trying. I would like that. They're trying different stuff. I guess that's cool. Yeah, I mean, I like the roster. Yeah, it's 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 very different from what I would expect we would be getting. Like not MCU focused. Yeah, I like that it's uh, a lot more um, comic book based. Yeah, so there was a PlayStation showcase uh, a while back. Showed off a bunch of games coming to the PS5. And they ended it with the uh, PlayStation Studio games. And Insomniac, with the big surprise of showing off two, one is just a super teaser for Wolverine. Yes! Yes! Your game is finally happening, Danny! It's happening! <laughs> as soon as as soon as we got the panning shot of the bar, I was like, oh, this is Wolverine, obviously. Yep. Like, heck yeah, and it's, man. And it, it looks perfect. And, uh, I man being made by the same people who made the Spider-Man games, like, they get it, man. Like, they're... This is great. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm really stoked to see how far this expands out. The Spider-Man... Like, the, the Marvel Insomniac universe, I guess, is what it's gonna be. Yeah, I wonder if it is gonna connect or not yeah. to uh, Spider-Man. That would be pretty cool. Like, I I would be pretty... I mean, they have the Avengers Tower in the Spider-Man game, and, like, Tony Stark yeah, is do. referenced, so it's like... There is other stuff in the universe of, of Spider-Man already. Yeah, so I'm super excited, man. Uh, I'm hoping that it's going to be next year because uh, just to jump ahead of Spider-Man 2, that was a 2023 release date. And I think it made more sense if it would come out in 2022. Yeah. Yeah. Which uh, I mentioned it over on Unverse Podcast. That'd be pretty crazy because that would mean Insomniac has been putting out one game a year for like five years in a row that's nuts give me all the games just give me give me all of them i'm down to, to, just do them all insomniac you you get superheroes you understand how they work uh it would be great if you could get the license over from dc too. uh just start making dc games uh please uh do it i'm into it do it do it uh bring it up bring it on and then we did actually get a good trailer for spider-man 2 I love that Craven the Hunter is going to be like the the second villain in this game, man. Yeah, oh, dude, yeah. I'm so stoked. And I don't, I don't know. Is it going to be two player? I have no idea. Like, oh my god, like Miles and Parker at the same time. Oh my god, man. Oh, I'm I'm really excited. <laughs> yeah, if I had to guess, you you'll probably just be able to switch between the two for free roam stuff, and then like for the story like you'll you will be switching between them and then there'll be just like random combos you can set up and stuff depending on how close you are to like miles or something or like vice versa yeah it's gonna be curious to see how they're gonna be pulling that stuff off yep. um hey we're getting the spider legs for peter that's pretty cool yeah uh well they were in the first game uh but not well, like they were in the a, first game like, for a cost yeah they're not like a story based deal but they do help you yeah like, they are like an yeah. upgrade deal um so it'll be neat to see it in here, uh, for it to for it to come up in this game. I'm down. Yes. Yeah, just the whole Craven monologue playing over the trailer was good. Yeah. And then we just just that last shot of just Venom coming in. Um, which I'm curious if it's Eddie Brock or if it's gonna be um uh Harry. Yeah, I I don't know. Um just going off of how they ended the last game, I, I feel like it's probably gonna be Harry. Um because this Peter Parker isn't super uh, Daily Planet based or Daily Bugle based. He sort of is, but like the Daily Bugle stuff in the games is more of like a podcast deal. Well, yeah, the J. Jonah. Yeah, the J. Jonah Jameson podcast. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, I don't really know where the impetus would be to connect him with Eddie Brock in these games. Um. Mm -hmm. So having it be Harry makes more sense, and that's that's who Venom was in the Ultimates comic book. Uh, was he was Harry Osborn? Oh, is that right? Yeah, it's it's oh. the same it's the same origin story for Venom in the Ultimates comic as it is here in this game, nice. where it's like oh, Harry okay. has a weird degenerative thing going on, and uh, Norman tries to fix it by creating like a new bacteria thing, and that's what the symbiote is. It's not like an alien life form. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. At least I'm pretty sure that's what it was. <laughs> really excited. Marvel games, like, they're still keeping me keeping me in. They keep me in the loop, man. Um, man, I still got to finish Miles, though. I haven't finished that one yet. <laughs> got, I got really bored with the story. Oh. 
<laughs> yeah, the I I like Miles Morales, but I love him as a character, just... but the story that he's involved with is so boring. I don't. Well, just wait, wait till the the last third of that game, Jay. Because let me tell you, that villain is pretty boring. I mean, I know who she is, and uh, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> oh, what was the joke I was doing? She's the same type of villain as another Marvel thing. Gosh, I'm forgetting what it is. She's like she's just the exact same as some other villain that we just don't care was about. Is it Taskmaster or Ghost? What? No, no, not those ones. Um, oh, it was some villain that was like just a really boring motivation, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, that's how that's how uh, uninteresting it yeah, is. Yeah, I, I, I remember, remember you making that joke too, and I just can't for the life of me remember who the other yeah. villain was because I didn't care about them either. Uh, <laughs> I think I said it on the up on one of these episodes, so it, it's it's out there somewhere. Yeah, if we if you find it, send us an email. If we find it, we probably won't bring it up. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, so you know, it's there, it's around. Uh, no, yeah, it's just a very boring uh, villain and motivation and all that stuff. Yep. There's a, there's a post credit scene in that game too. Oh, okay. I I mean maybe that's enough to get me to finish the game. I guess. Is it a good post credit? Yeah. Like does it lead into what what's happening in the new game? Yeah. Oh, tight. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um Let me just pull it up again cuz I'm not re- trying to blank on what it was. All I'm saying also is that they can do a lot with this second Spider-Man game, but I'm real happy they didn't show off Peter Parker's face at all in the trailer. Because man, did oh. I forget that they for- that they changed the yes. guy and that I'm going to have to look at the weird goofy looking guy the whole time i'm playing that stupid game <laughs> i totally forgot about yeah, it until like right now <laughs> that's truly a bummer it really is uh it's man that one hurts i don't know that's oh i just remembered <laughs> the villain from miles morales has the same motivations as the villain in falcon and the winter soldier oh that's what it was now i remember yeah and both of them yeah. were entirely forgettable well, that was it for the video game stuff uh, for Marvel, so we could go back on track with some other stuff here. Uh, we do have a, a supposed report for the runtime for Eternals, which is coming out in November. It's two hours and 34 minutes. It's long. Is is, is that because you're going to the... Are you going to go to uh, it? Yeah, I, I think at this point I'm pretty much confirmed. Uh, we, uh, Me I and a couple other friends got invited uh, to the Eternals premiere uh in october uh so i will be seeing it a month early we might have an open spot if you want to go danny i don't know if you would want to uh but yeah i two hours and 34 minutes is what it's uh quoted at which means uh from the it's pretty long yeah which means for the premiere and with all the actors coming in we're we're gonna be there for a while yeah that's a, that's a whole day right oh there. yeah um yeah i'm excited to potentially meet a lot of actors though uh should be a good time um getting to run into like the Stark brothers and um, Angelina Jolie and stuff. Yeah, that, my biggest thing is pacing better be good. For yeah. That because if it's if it's not run well, that two hours and 36 minutes or whatever, it's going to feel long. Yep. Yeah. Because uh, there is a way to do good pacing in a two hour and 30 minute movie or even a three hour movie. And uh, Zack Snyder knows how to do that. Um, yes. But going off of the other movies that chloe's chloe zhao the director of this one has made um i have a feeling the pacing on this might be pretty slow uh because that's her style of making movies who knows i could be totally blown away by the movie and that would be awesome i would be way into that um remember our feelings are based off the trailers not selling the movie well and that's that's pretty and if this movie ends up being great with bad trailers then cool like that's that's that would be my best hope for how the movie turns out because i would love for this movie to be great and to fall in love with all of those characters uh other news that we have uh the director for thor dark world has spoken recently oh yeah he wants to uh he wants to do a director's cut of that movie which uh yeah do it i say let it let it out let it let it come out i'm i'm down because i know there was definitely stuff in that movie that got cut out Oh, yeah. I mean, that was also during a phase of Marvel where they were like, no, it has to be 
our way or you're out kind yep, of thing. That right? was during the Ant Man era where uh, Edgar Wright was Edgar like, Wright. Mm, I ain't yep. doing this, so he quit. Uh, so yeah, I I would love to see um, a director's cut of Thor: Dark World. Yeah, I'd be down. Uh, I haven't rewatched it yet, but I I do remember saying the last time we talked about it, I'm like, well, if I rewatch it, I probably enjoy it a lot more now. So I am totally down yeah, for that. I will say that uh, I did rewatch it more recently, and I loved it. I I think Thor: Dark World really like. I think it holds up uh, a lot better for me than Ragnarok does um, in terms of just rewatchability, like going back to it. Ragnarok's a fun time, but I ultimately I keep feeling like the character is, just gets totally, like, it's just not right for Thor in that movie. Like, he's not Thor anymore in that movie. He's uh, Chris Hemsworth in that yeah, movie. Yeah, he's just Chris yeah. Hemsworth. And, and I feel like Thor Dark World does a better job of actually having him be more Shakespearean and, and a little closer to what a god would act like um <laughs> i don't know who's been around for thousands of years um you know yeah again it's just unfortunate people don't want that for thor yeah because i mean that's what loki was there for loki was that character and then they just made them both that character but then also they made mm-hmm. everybody that character um in marvel so i don't know it's i think it's just an overall marvel issue at this point and then um, we got new information about the Marvels, right? That's uh, pretty meh. I, I, the, uh, Mar- Marvel's going to be in it again, I guess. I don't know. We're going to get more backstory that we should have just gotten in the movie. Yeah, I don't know why we have to um, dive in more into that yeah. character. Like, I thought the end of that movie, the whole point was that she doesn't have to be in his shadow anymore kind of thing. Well, Marvel wasn't the guy in the movie. It's the lady. Mar- Marvel's the lady oh, that, gosh, that does the spaceship thing. That's right. Yeah, Marvel doesn't exist I in the forgot. movies like he does in the comic books. This is a totally oh, different that's... Marvel. <laughs> and and you know we're gonna get more backstory on that character, which I'm like, it should have just been in the movie. Like I don't, <laughs> like I don't know. Like <laughs> I, I'm, I could care less. I don't know. I yeah, I could care less because I forgot. That's what the reveal was. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, because the other guy is Jan Rog, and he doesn't do anything. <laughs> he's he's a nobody. <laughs> uh, so that you know what that means. I care less about this. There movie you go. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying I cared a whole lot, but yep. yeah, yeah. There's uh, just nothing there. No, it's just not not there for me. I got nothing, boys. With that, do we say it's time to dive into the big piece of the show? Yes, I think it is. It's time to let there be carnage. And I'm going to send you a picture. I'm going to send you a link right now in the chat because uh, just before we hop into the movie, uh, Hot Toys just revealed today their one sixth version of Carnage. And holy moly. Oh, I saw oh this. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> holy moly. Whoa. He looks really good. I don't even understand how they're doing all the tentacle stuff on him, but. It looks rad. Uh, yeah. Wow. <sighs> wow. Yeah, they really nailed Carnage, man. It's so good. Yep. Oh, and I like it. it. comes with an alternate head for their Venom figure that has the half of it and Eddie Brock face sticking out. Yeah, oh, yeah that's, that's nice. That's neat. Yeah, so if you got Venom from the first movie, you get this for him from this movie. That's cool. I like that a lot. Well, right on, guys. Let's dive in to Venom. Let there be carnage. It just came out, and man, it was a great time. Oh, just just as good as the first one, man. Like this, this was great. Um, super early two thousands. I loved it. All the music was perfect. Uh, I, I I don't know. I just loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I had a great time. Yeah, there was a specific scene somewhere around the halfway point where uh, some music started playing, and I was in the theater thinking, oh, hell yeah, they kept the early 2000s yes. vibe. This is what they just needed <sighs> to do, and they still it's nailed so it. It's so good. Amazing. <laughs> it's just like, I see the credits rolling, and there's a part where it has like the date of 2021, and I was like, there's no way. This movie came out 20 years ago. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> yeah. This movie came out in 2002. You can't convince me it came out now. There's no way. <laughs> Andy Serkis did a great job directing this movie, I will say. Uh, 
Yes. I, I think this one is um, pretty superior to the first one in terms of how it looks and, and stuff. I think the story is probably around the same level for me in terms of both things, uh, both movies. But uh, in terms of like just the way that it was shot and the way it looked and like the, the CGI and everything and how that was used, I thought all that stuff was um, way better than the first one. During like the first half, basically, of the movie... I did not expect to laugh as much as I did. Yeah, in it, super fun. All the dialogue was great. Uh, I didn't know that uh, Tom Hardy uh, had a hand in the writing. Oh, did movie. he? Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's a story written by Tom Hardy and uh, one other. Oh, that's person. excellent. I like that a lot. Yeah, and he—you could tell he had so much fun voicing yeah. Venom in this. Yeah, ah, oh, that's wonderful. I like just the 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 banter that he has with himself is so. It's very natural, like, how he performs it and stuff. Like, it's so well done. I love the breakup breakfast. Uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> yes. probably, like, one of the best bits of the movie. Um, hearing Venom sing terribly to a song is one of my favorite things now. I just love how much personality they've given to Venom as a character. And, and I just, I, I don't know. I don't ever want him to change. He's so perfect. It's <laughs> Maybe only once or twice where I thought, like, okay, maybe they're going a little too much with Venom mm-hmm. and the way he's talking. But most of the time, yeah, no, I'd have no problem. Like, this is a, a good way to have him in the movie. Yeah. I, I will say I wish there was at least, like, one more action scene in the first half of the film. Um, yeah. That's like, that's, like, my biggest thing about the movie is that I wish there was just at least one more action set piece in the first half um, that involved Venom in some way. Uh because he just kind of doesn't do a whole lot in that first half of the movie. Yeah, and uh, that might have to do with the time restraints on this movie. It's a 90-minute yeah. film, which that's really my only big complaint is I wish it was yeah. longer. Yeah, this could have used like an extra 20 minutes, I think, to the runtime. You When we get to the final fight, and I was watching the scene going on, I was like, oh, this is it, isn't it? This is the final fight. Like I was hoping maybe this was like a second act thing, but... That's when I remembered, oh, this is a shorter movie. Yeah, so it, it runs up to that th- final fight it. real quick. It, we, we get there fast. Like, that's... And it's a good final fight. Like, it's fun. Um, but we just get there really quick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's great. It's super engaging. More or less brutal with what you can do with symbiotes. Yeah, and with the PG-13 rating, right? Because this one wasn't rated R. Yeah, um, that too. Which is a bummer. I think this movie could have been better as an R-rated uh, but I get why. I understand why it wasn't R-rated. And it was the very end of the movie that makes it so it can't be R-rated. It's like the very last scene that probably keeps this from being an yeah, R-rated oh, film. Yes. Um. <laughs> yeah, that's that would be the reason, right? Yeah. Uh, Woody Harrelson was great oh, in this. Oh, yeah, he did a great job. Uh, I didn't really like Shriek. I uh, thought she was okay. I thought she was okay. I felt like her, I felt like her accent kept changing. Was that just me? That yeah, it. She was just sounded weird when she was talking, like very extra with her character. But hey, that's that's that early two thousands cheese that we love, man. So yes, is, it is. is yeah, like something that. out of Daredevil, not Daredevil, something out of Ghost yeah, Rider. That's, <laughs> oh my god, she would fit in so perfect in a Ghost Rider movie. But yeah, her her whole character was, I, like, she started off really interesting, and I'm like, oh, she's really intimidating when she's not talking. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, and then they had her talk, and I was like, uh, oh, okay, I-, I guess that's how she sounds. Um, yeah, full cartoon. Yep. Yeah. Uh, a little, yeah, cartoony. That's that's what I would describe her as. She's she's very cartoony, mm-hmm. which isn't a bad thing. That's fine. I mean, they could have had her just be really boring and not say anything. So I will say that I'd probably take this over that. Yeah, that's that's fair. I, I'd rather, like, because I'm going to remember Shriek. I didn't really like her, but I'm going to remember her. And I think I'd rather remember the character than just have her be nothing like Taskmaster. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, at least this exactly. character has something going on um, and is relatively interesting. Whereas Taskmaster was nothing. There was no character <laughs> at all. Zero. With Shriek, there was only one scene, or really one line, that kind of bothered uh-huh. me. That That felt like it was rushed because we were nearing the end of the movie, uh, which we could get into for spoilers, but that's really my only problem with her, aside from just her just acting weird, but 
it, it fits. You know, I get, it makes sense for her to be with Cletus because they're both kind of yeah, and, wacky and like uh, that, right? they're together in the comic books too. Yeah, yes. So that's that's comic accurate, which is cool. Um, they nailed it. I was like, oh, neat. That's cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I will say, uh, I did rewatch the first film. Okay. Before going to see it. And then just seeing the post credit scene with uh, Woody Harrelson wearing the wig. <laughs> you know, it's it's not as goofy as I remembered yeah, it was. but it's just the shock of seeing it, I think, is the is the biggest part. Um, yeah, I think they could have kept it, and it would have been yeah, fine. Especially because he changes um, his hair anyway, halfway through this movie. Um, yeah, to a very early 2000s like, oh comic boy, book looking that, haircut. <laughs> like, just early 2000s haircut. Just <laughs> just end it there. It's not even from a comic. It's just, oh, man. <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but it fit. It fit the movie. Oh, yeah, it, just, it, it worked. It, it, also because of the outfit he wears, too. Yeah, like, it matches like the, that. Like the red Hawaiian shirt thing and, like, the black jacket. I'm yeah. like, he looks like he stepped right off of a comic book page. <laughs> and it's perfect. Like, I love it. They nailed it, like, so well with Cletus. Like, he's so good. I think we got enough screen time with him, but I wanted more. Yeah, that's that's what I wanted, too. I just, that that's how I felt about this whole movie. I just wanted more. Just more. More, more, more. That's all I want. That's cool. Still good, though. Really good. Just want more. Yeah, I liked his, uh, I liked the early scenes with him and Eddie Brock uh, talking to one another. Yeah, I like all all of their interaction scenes were really, really, uh, really, really well done. I would say overall, this is a really great watch. Uh, fun time. Uh, really funny. Not super horrific. I think you could probably take not like super young kids, but marginally young kids to this and they'd still have a good time. Yeah, you know, it's it's less shocking than the first Venom Yeah, movie. I would say so. Yeah. Because, you know, that's also PG-13, right? And there's the scenes where Venom's just chopping people's heads off. And I think they them. really push it further in the first one compared to this one. Like this one t- keeps it pretty tame. I would I would say for the most part. Yeah, I thought so too. Like the most brutal it gets is really the final fight. Maybe a little bit of the jailbreak sequence is 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 kind that of too. rough, but yeah. it's not too bad because you don't really get to see a whole lot of what's happening. Which that that's the one scene where I'll critique it as being like they covered up a lot of things that were happening. Um, a lot of smoke, a lot of camera Yeah, movements. and dark yeah. lighting and, and, and hard to see mm-hmm. and, you know, like that kind of deal. Um, well, I will say it, it was easier to see Venom. Yeah, Venom was way easier to see in this movie. Uh, whatever they did to, to make him bounce out from the background more, like color correction-wise or whatever, it like worked really well in this one. Um, and I would say Carnage pops out from the screen pretty good, too. The only other thing I have to say, aside from spoilers, is all the promotional art for this movie was fantastic. Oh, yeah, just every time you would share a new uh, a new poster or, like, like promo image, it was always just great. All the design work on this movie was pretty spectacular, to be honest. I gotta say. It really drove the hype for me for the movie, just how good they looked in the yeah. posters and stuff. and. Um, it was a while back, too. Uh, some theater had uh, statues of Carnage yeah, and Yeah, I remember that. And oh, they just looked so good. So I think with all that said, we could go ahead and dive into some spoilers for yeah. this movie. Uh, I'm sad Cletus doesn't make it. That's the biggest bummer to me about this movie. I'm so sad. Yeah. That's, I like the scene. Yeah, it's a great scene. Uh, it's just a bummer that it ended like an early 2000s movie and we just killed the villain. Yeah, it sucks that Cletus is dead, but I think it's open for Carnage to make a return. Yep. Uh, but it's a bummer it's not going to be Woody Harrelson again. Yeah, I would love for Woody Harrelson to come back and do this if if there's an option to do it. That's the only part of this movie that really bummed me out, was that he just didn't... I, I just wanted more, and then he was gone. And I'm like, ah, I wish there could have been some way he survived this whole situation. Yeah, that it really sucks, because especially it's such a short movie. Yeah. And to not have him, like, move forward, that's that's the biggest bummer for me. But who knows, because we're no longer in that universe. Yes, uh, so there could be another Cletus Cassidy out there somewhere. Um, I will say one one thing I really liked was in the beginning of the movie, uh, which was the, uh, the intro scene of Shriek uh, being taken away. And that was Woody Harrelson, right, narrating? If it wasn't, that dude sounded a lot like him. Um, the younger actor they had to play the character. Maybe. I don't know. 
<laughs> He's talking on screen, so maybe that is him. But no, but it sounds too close to Woody. So maybe it really, maybe it is. It him. could be that they had the guy like act the scene out, and then they had Woody just voice over it, which would be great. I just liked that they they were like, we're not going to try and do any of that silly face shifting stuff. We don't need to do none of that. Just cast a guy who sort of looks like Woody Harrelson and sort of looks like the cop guy and sort of looks like the lady. And we'll right. make it work. Yeah. And I'm like, that's such an early 2000s way to do that. And I love it. Like, that that was great. I was like, you don't need him to look exactly the same. That's fine. And I, I thought he looked pretty close. Yeah, I, I thought he looked pretty close, too. Like, they did a good job. Yeah, that stuff was cool. Uh, his, I, I really like Carnage's voice, too. I don't know if that's Woody Harrelson voicing him, like how Tom Hardy does uh, Venom. I, I want to say it's probably the same kind of deal. Um, but I loved Carnage's voice. Yeah, he sounded great. Real scary. Yeah, intimidating, too. Uh, and also, like, just his attitude that he has well, was great. He's just like, yeah, you make sure she doesn't yell like that again, talking about Shriek. And yeah. I that like that stuff. he kind of Ooh. had a more, like, it, like mobster feel to him. Like he's like, you better mm-hmm. not let that lady talk to me ever again. Blah, 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 blah. I'll eat her head off. And I'm just like, yeah, this is great. I think it, it's supposed to be kind of like what if Venom wasn't how he is and more like how the other symbiotes are like Riot. Yeah. I, I think is, is what they were going for. Yep. Which is good. I did. Yeah. I, I kind of wish we got more dialogue between Carnage and Venom, though. Yeah, that was something I wished we had had. Um, a little bit more of the father-son dynamic deal would have been cool because venom doesn't even question it or anything he just the only thing is like whoa it's a red one he freaks out but yeah that's it he kept calling him father and there was no reactions to that like a little bit of extra extra dialogue to back that stuff up would have been cool that was that was another thing we said about the movie when we left it yesterday too um was we just wish there had been a little bit more detail about that stuff going on in the dialogue I guess I guess the biggest takeaway from that kind of stuff is that this movie really assumes that you've seen that you've read some of the comics. Yeah, and I think that's what's important, right? Mm-hmm. Because then you don't have to waste any time trying to explain everything. Yeah. When we already know what's kind of going yep. on. And and I think just like the way that they do do it where it's Venom just immediately reacts to like, "Oh, no, that's a red one. I ain't doing that." Like, "Okay, yeah, no, that mm-hmm. obviously they're bad." Like like, we can pick that up pretty quick. Yeah, we don't need a scene of Tom Hardy talking to himself about why being red is bad. Yeah. Like, what's the difference between symbiote colors or whatever, and then Venom goes into, like, a whole thing? Like, we didn't even need that. Like, it's just like, nope, red ones are more evil and mean than other ones. That's that's what we got. And it's like, oh, yeah, no. Pick that up pretty quick. That's That works. So, yeah, I don't really have any too many problems with that there. Um, no, yeah, I mean, overall, don't have a lot of complaints about the mm-mm. movie. Um, I will say I was surprised by a few things. Uh, I thought for sure uh, Dan was gonna die in the third act. Oh yeah, I was I was convinced Dan was gonna end up dead, uh, but he lived and survived, and that's cool. Uh, I liked that he actually had something to do in this movie, which was neat. Yeah, I didn't expect him to to help in the fight at all. So that was cool. Um, it was like just a nice building block on the last one, and a good cementing of like where. Eddie Brock stood in that relationship, you know, that's good setup for what happens in the post credit scene because now obviously those characters aren't around. The the scene where Venom's under all the debris and then Dan runs up to him and tries to like tell him to get up. I thought Venom was saying like he's too weak because he hasn't eaten human brains in a long time. I thought he was gonna eat Dan. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I thought. He was gonna like Dan was gonna sacrifice himself yeah, to. That's what I thought. Uh, help them save the day. Like if it helps save my wife, you do it. Kill me, eat me. Like I thought yeah. there was gonna be something with that. I think we brought that question up. It's like, oh, like sure they're bringing Anne back, but how's this weird relationship gonna flesh out if he's still in the picture? Yeah, I thought that was gonna happen because there was the scene earlier where Carnage ate the priest and he got bigger and stronger. Yeah. And then, like, Carnage's whole deal, all, oh, man, you remember the part in the jailbreak when he, like, just shoves, like, a spike down a dude's throat? That was great. Yeah, uh, yeah, totally ruthless, huh, so good. That was excellent. Uh, it was cool we saw She-Venom again. Yeah. But uh, I wish it was just 
in a better looking angle. Yeah, it was really awkward. Like it wasn't anywhere near as dynamic as the first movie when she shows up. Like in that forest clearing and it's a nice wide shot and mm-hmm. you can see the whole body. This one was just, oh, she walks into the room and we look at her from a low angle. Um, I was not expecting a lot of stuff in the movie in the first half, right? Mainly with the dialogue and again, like how, how funny it was. But also uh, Eddie and Venom just splitting off for a portion of the movie and then just getting to see Venom go on his own adventure and hit up this this rave that's oh, going on. That was on. such a 90s deal, <laughs> man. I loved that. That was so good. He had all the he had the glow rings all over his body. It was Oh great. yeah, that was so goofy. His super awkward speech to a bunch of drugged out teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh masterful just just hilarious like yeah i like how he walks in he says like, oh these guys are weirdos my kind of people. my kind of people <laughs> yeah it's so good <laughs> uh, and then everybody's saying nice costume man and he's like it's like i made it myself <laughs> yeah yeah they, they made venom a very likable character yeah like there wasn't a moment i didn't like it makes him. me really worried about how he's going to end up getting treated going forward <laughs> i really hope they don't change him too much because i love him he's he's just so lovable and and he's very Drax like in a lot of ways, um, which I think makes it work really well. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, how he is in Guardians Two. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. I mean, he also. I mean, he had some good moments that weren't funny either. Right at the end of that party, you know, and he's jumping bodies. Nobody's compatible, and he's like, "Oh, if only Eddie was here to see yep. this kind of thing." Because you know, he st- they still care about each other in that sense. And I thought that was a nice little yeah, touch for his. That character. was cool. I loved. <laughs> I loved the whole argument they had after getting out of the out of the jail too uh where like it's it's oh a, yeah <laughs> what, what's her face has like venom in her and like <laughs> and like it's just tom hardy trying to talk through her and apologize to venom when in, sort of he's apologizing to her and like there's there's sort of like a dual yeah, thing happening yeah. there um it's it's pretty great i was just like oh there's there's some clever stuff happening in these scenes this is... yeah i like that i thought we were gonna go more of Eddie actually apologizing to Anne more than on Venom, and that was like Venom's plan because you know they they go for the hug. Yeah, and then Venom goes like, "Kiss her, kiss her," and he's like, "Should I kiss you now?" And she's like, "Ew, no, <laughs> why?" <laughs> and I'm just like, "Yeah, perfect. That's that's beautifully done. I I loved it." <laughs> yeah, I mean, all all the humor and the jokes were paced so perfectly in this movie. All the timing was right, especially in the first half when it was just like laugh after laugh oh, going on so of just the good. back and forth dialogue. And the best part is it's Tom Hardy playing off of himself. Yep. That's great. Like, yeah. I just imagine how how difficult all the scenes were to film in live action and like respond to like voices that aren't actually there. It just goes to show that Tom Hardy is just like excellent at doing this role. Like Eddie Brock was what he was like born to do in terms of superhero movies. I like the part where like he finally gets rid of him and like he's just laying on the floor and he's like, "Ah, peace and quiet." And then you just hear the <laughs> boom, uh-huh. boom, boom. <laughs> it's just Venom <laughs> wrecking his motorcycle outside. <laughs> That, that whole bit where they're, like, having their breakup was great. Like, Venom's just throwing stuff out of the window and being like, Get out! <laughs> yeah! This is my apartment! <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, man. This is yeah. wonderful. I, I'm, I'm way into that. I'm glad that Eddie did bring up why he can't eat bad guys. Because, remember, at the end of the first movie, that's what he told Venom. like, we're only allowed to eat bad guys. Yep. But then now he couldn't. It's like, well, it's because the FBI is still kind of watching him. After everything that happened at the space station yeah, in the first like, movie, I'm like, oh, like now okay. we're being traced like real hard. So if any more heads go missing, we're done. And I was like, that yeah. that's a good idea. That's that's a great idea for why they mm-hmm. can't have as many action scenes in the beginning of the movie. Even though I wanted one, I got why we couldn't. They they explained it and made it made sense story wise. Uh, I love how Venom has pet chickens. Like he didn't <laughs> yeah. have the heart to eat. Those and they're chickens. called Sonny and Cher. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Like I didn't expect uh, Venom to have so much personality. Yeah. in these movies, and I'm super glad that they chose to go that it's, way. It's a great idea because um, they could have just had Venom be more like the one that was in Spider Man Three, where he was just nothing and just like an evil monster man. He is a character. Like Venom should be treated that way because he is the title character. And I like um, that he shares a lot of emotional center with Eddie throughout the movie. When Eddie's standing there getting berated by Cletus at the jail cell, Eddie doesn't lash out. He's able to control the emotion, but because of the connection that him and Venom have, Venom is the one who lashes out and gets mad. Mm-hmm. Venom is the one who operates on like Eddie's deeper emotional like triggers 
which I always, which I think is kind of neat. That's also the after the scene of where Anne tells him that she's engaged, then you know they have that moment to where Venom says, you know, I can heal physical, but emotional, I can't do that, and it lasts much longer. Yeah. So I, I feel your it's pain. Much deeper. Yeah. Yep. Oh my god, the part, <laughs> the part where they're leaving the restaurant, and Venom's like, I'm gonna make you cry now, cry. Cry, cry. <laughs> it's, like, it's, all, it's like, yeah, she would love that. Yeah. <laughs> and, he, and, and he's just like, I'm going to, I, I got to go. <laughs> like, uh, The only line I was a little bothered with from Venom is the line he tells the guy that was stealing the purse early on and he's hanging him by his ankle. Uh-huh. And it's the line is reminiscent to what he says at the end of the first movie where he's like, you're like a turd in the wind. Like it's, it's kind of playing off of that same type. Oh, of like line. your body's going to roll around in the breeze or something. Yeah, and I just feel like they were just trying to recreate that. Yeah, that, that was really like the only line I had a problem with. with yeah, Venom. I would agree. That that's probably the only part where I've kind of lost. I like the scene with uh, when they're delivering Shriek the newspaper, and like they're showing the process of like the noise canceling uh, earbuds, and then you. Oh walk yeah, into like how they keep her. It's just how muted. they keep her uh, trapped and everything. Okay, so mm-hmm. in the comic books, you know more about X Men. Is she a mutant? Uh, which I think is the and they case. say they say that in this movie. That her mutation is accelerating. Well, even the facility she's at, Ravencroft. Yeah, that's that's a X Men thing, right? Yeah, I, think, I know that that's in the comics for sure. And I was like, man, Ravencroft sounds so familiar. And I was like, I wonder if that's the same facility name as the New Mutants building, but I don't think it is. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure uh, she is a mutant. Of course, like she is mainly like a Spider Man villain. That's why they can use. Yeah, her. that makes sense. But I like that this movie was just like, yeah, no, we're gonna say mutation in this movie. We're not gonna shy away from saying that. Oh, Ravencroft is a Moon Knight place too. Yeah, because it's it's more than just powered people, right? It's more criminally insane. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, I wonder if Moon Knight will. That's what I was pop thinking. Up there yep. at some point. Oh, Ravencroft was in Amazing Spider-Man. Oh, in the first one? No, oh, second one. Second one, because it's where. Oh, um, oh it's, that's the facility. It's at where the they end. take uh, Electro. Oh. Yeah, Electro gets locked up in Ravencroft, and Harry Osborn breaks him out of there. Oh yeah, the one scene I didn't like with Shriek was when. Uh, Carnage is just coming up on top of the building and he's like this huge giant menacing figure and she's freaking out saying like like you're losing control you have to stop him now like it felt like there was it it felt like there was a scene missing like from there like like a lot of the a lot of that final fight felt like it had some bits missing from here from it here and there yeah it felt off to me Um, I think mainly also with the scene where you know he shows off her powers the first time she's like oh that is so hot you know, like she was totally doing yeah, it. Yeah, she's like 100% into it. And then all of a sudden she just says, actually, no, we can't do this. And then Carnage's like, well, I'll just kill her anyway. Because there's like no scene of yeah. her like seeing him like eat the priest or something, like a reaction shot of her being like, oh my God, like something like that. Like there's yeah. nothing like that to it. Or like her being like, you said that we were only going to capture the girl. We were never going to kill her. Yeah, it that that was really out of character for her to say that. <laughs> That's probably because of time restraints. I, I'd imagine that there was probably more to that sequence of stuff, and it just wasn't wasn't mm-hmm. in the final cut. Because that's how that whole final fight kind of felt, was that there was stuff we were kind of missing out on in certain bits and pieces. Yeah, I only hope for like an extended version on Blu-ray or something. It'd be neat if they did like a, like a Justice League, or not Justice League, a BVS deal where there's like an extended cut that's R-rated that comes out later. Mm, um, yeah. I would love if they did that. I hope they get to you. Andy Serkis feels like he's got that kind of pull. I, I like that Eddie Brock uh, makes a name for himself again by Ven- by way of Venom catching something that he didn't. Like, I like their whole, like, the buddy cop kind of vibe that I got from those few scenes. I, I loved how eager Venom was into doing that job. Yeah, like being like being a hero, just like the way he wants to be a hero, like the whole time. Yeah, he wants to be a lethal protector. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> that's oh, the lethal protector stuff was yeah. so funny. Yeah, and the scene of uh, Tom Hardy just shaking his body while Venom draws uh, what he saw. Oh my the, god, the that was so too. funny. He's like, look, and then he like like does all the really fast drawing, and he's like, oh, okay, what am I? What am I? A tree? A tree? It's a tree. No, throws it away. Like all the all the bits of um. Uh, Venom taking control of Eddie at various points throughout the movie was awesome. I loved when they show up at the wedding, Venom sees Carnage oh, transform, yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, oh, shit. He's just like, no, I'm not doing this. And then he's like, you know what? You guys have a wonderful ceremony. We're going to get going. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, he's forcing Eddie to do, like, the motions and the movement. That's just, like, brilliant. That's hilarious. That's the kind of stuff 
I need to see more of with Venom and Eddie. That's so good. And then, like, when they go to the jail and, like, Eddie's like, you suck! And, like, the lady's like, excuse me? <laughs> oh, I love how he has a go-to answer now for those outbursts. Like, he when he told the first security guard, it's like, what'd you say? He's like, oh, no, I'm just, I'm just practicing. Yeah, I'm just rehearsing. I'm, I'm practicing say. for something later. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, when he said it to the lady, he's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just nervous. I'm just very nervous. <laughs> well, no, he says, like, ah, yeah, I don't have an excuse for that one. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Oh, man. So, uh, so great. Good. You know what was really cool in the movie was uh, when Cletus was talking about his um, backstory through the yeah that he sent, and then we the get, whole like, animated bit, like like a Tim Burton esque looking uh, animation bit. Yeah, that was really good. I was really hoping that was gonna come back in the final fight in some way. Like you know, like he starts explaining to Eddie like how he was abused by his mom and his granny or whatever. Like that would have been a great place to bring that back and like have that become. Like, just just have that stylistic choice return. Because having it only in that one scene was kind of a bummer because I liked it. But I was like, it's only in this one part. And that's it. Like, Yeah, I would have hoped for more, too. It was so interesting looking, too. Like, I loved the way they used that as a storytelling feature. Um, And, like, the way they had, like, Eddie look up at uh, Cletus at a one point throughout it. And, like, they were, like, they finally were, like, starting to understand each other on a different level was really good. Uh, but I, but I yeah, guess, man. uh, should, should we talk about the scene? All that I really have to talk about left is that post credit. Yeah. Scene. That's all I got too. I got Which... nothing else. I mean, I love the bit at the end where they end up on a <clears throat> beach together and they're just like, where are we going to go? And Eddie's <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. We'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. That, that's and really that, fun. And that was just yeah. such a nice, like riding off into the sunset kind of scene. And I was like, this is a good cap. This is a really nice, like, just final bit for the two of them. I, I don't know what you thought, Jake, but the scene where Eddie says, like, I'm sorry we can't do the thing about, that, you know, your hair in the wind. I thought Venom was, like, going to, like, just make some tentacles. That look oh, like yeah, I thought he was going to sprout out, like, some the top tendrils. Of his head or but then he, like, but then Venom yeah. says something about, like, we all have our flaws. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Eddie's like, wait, 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 wait. Are you trying to tell, are you trying to say that I'm defective? Like, that. <laughs> That was great. Oh, oh, I loved how the post credit scene started with them watching a novella. Yeah, like where, uh, like whatever beach they're on. <laughs> like I assumed that it, they were in like Mexico or something, like like somewhere in yeah, South America. somewhere where they wouldn't yeah. be found. Very, very incredible Hulk in that uh, in that way. Um, yeah, yes, very, yes. very similar to that. Uh, I guess we could talk about all the little references that were in there. Like there was a lizard reference right at the end on the beach. Uh, there was. Oh, is that what you? That's yeah, what that's you what meant? I meant. I was like, oh, there's the oh, reference okay. to the lizard because I was like, why else would there just be a random iguana that's there? True. You know, um, like, yeah, I guess yeah, there there is some nice nods to the other films that are like kind of subtle. yeah, like like when Cletus um, is talking about uh, like in the letter he's talking about like becoming a hero or something, uh, and then he squishes the spider, and I was like, ah. It's a Spider-Man yeah. reference right there. Oh, uh, I like the scene where uh, he pulls, the, he puts the car in suspension with with Carnage, and I was like, "Oh, that kind of reminds me of uh, Spider-Man." Yeah, team. yeah. Uh, oh, there was the scene where uh, when Venom grabs the uh, the metal pipe. Yeah, I thought he was going to grab a bunch of them. I and, thought they were going to do the Spider-Man, Spider-Man three ending for like a hot second. I was like, "Are they really going to do it?" Ah, oh, man. And I guess, I guess, like, um, I guess Shriek could still come back. Right? Because she just got crushed by a... Like, she didn't get crushed, but she just ended up inside the bell. I think that implies she's dead, oh, okay. Though. See, I, I was wondering if they were going to, like... Because that was the other part, that the film wrapped up so fast. I thought they were going to have a scene of, like, them lifting the yeah. bell up, and she was going to be under it, but her eardrums were just going to be ruptured. Like, she couldn't hear anything mm. anymore, because she had... Right, because she amplified Yeah, because she was screaming into the bell, but then it reverberated it back at her, and, it, like, maybe that, like, messed her up or something. I thought that could have been kind of yeah. neat. Um, they also had a tease for Toxin at the at the very yes. end, which was weird. Like, the cop becomes Toxin, and I was like, when throughout this entire thing did he get infected by a symbiote? What the heck happened? That's what I was thinking, too. Like, I don't really remember an instance where that happens. Yeah, like, so I'm... He was being strangled by Carnage... Uh, in the chapel scene, but I don't think that's enough. I guess enough. that could be where it happened? I don't know. It, that that felt like a scene that they kept in, but they got rid of the part that teased it first. I, I guess I would say that is my other bummer, is how fast the movie wraps yeah, up. Yeah, like everything is just yeah. like, and hey, it's done, we're over, we gotta go, bye. 
Got to get you to that post credit scene as fast as possible. Uh, but yeah, let's let's talk about it, man. Uh, telenovela uh, is very interesting, and I love that they both understand exactly what's going on in it, which is great. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like, they can both, like, speak, like, perfect <laughs> Spanish and stuff. That I thought that was pretty interesting. But then Venom, like, is like, hey, I'm going to teach you all about the eight million years of knowledge that I have. And then everything goes blurry. Yeah. And then they're in a new timeline. Yeah, so I first I thought... Oh, is this this is uh, Venom trying to show Eddie all the knowledge and like that's just a visual representation of what's happening to Eddie? Yeah, mind. see, I thought like the time dilation thing that was happening was just that I'm going to show you eight million years of knowledge and that's going to take a while, so you're just going to like pass out for a minute and time's going to move really fast. Like Eddie was just laying in the bed like for that whole minute, but then no, uh, it takes a twist and that's not what happens. Instead, No Way Home happens. I'm yeah. pretty sure they got pulled over to the, the, like, I mean, obviously they did, but they got pulled over to the MCU. Like, they're in it. Which is crazy. Because initially, I was like, when it was happening, I was thinking, wait, what, what Spider-Man villain can that's doing this for Venom 3 or whatever? But then as soon as you're like, oh, wait a minute, everything's changing. And then you hear J. Jonah Jameson on the TV. I was like, dude, no way, yep. man. And then that's Tom crazy. Holland popped up, and I was like, holy, oh my god. Like, I shouted in the theater. I was like... It was very hype. I didn't think that they were going to pull Venom in so yeah, soon. Yeah, I didn't either. I had no idea. I think the scene of Venom licking the television set when he sees Peter Parker is really creepy. It was a little weird. Like, you know, like, yeah, Venom wants Spider-Man. That's that's Yeah, like, I thing, get that. Like, but Venom. also, like... It's like he looks delicious. Like, that's And grown the alien monster <laughs> licking the screen of a teenage boy. I'm like, hmm, that's a little weird. Uh, but that, that whole bit was great. Uh, Madison had a cool theory that the only reason they were aware of shifting over is because of Venom's uh, interstellar knowledge. Like, because he's such mm. an old creature, he can tell when stuff like that happens. And so she's curious if in No Way Home, the other Spider-Man villains that pop up won't necessarily be as aware that stuff has changed. Like, their brains will just change to, oh. like, accept it. So they'll, they'll just think... Tom Holland is their Peter yeah, Parker. Yeah, which is how they could get around uh, the other Spider-Man not being in the movie, which would be a bummer. <laughs> if, if they're, if not, they're in not in the movie. It makes more sense now of why Morbius is coming out. I wish Morbius was sooner, like before No Way Home, but right, the director sort of leaked that Tom Hardy's in that movie. Yeah. And the fact that Vulture's yep. in that movie. I, I have 100% confidence that Morbius takes place in the MCU at this point. Yeah, yeah, like, that's definitely an MCU film. I don't think there's any ifs, ands, or buts about that anymore. I mean, I won't say much about whatever spoilers we've seen for No Way Home, but Venom is definitely not in those spoilers. Yeah, no, uh, I don't know if he will be in No Way Home. I have, I don't think he will. Because it is still a crowded movie. Like, maybe a post credit scene Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, maybe there will be a post credit teaser to, to show Venom. But it could be kind of interesting if this is the movie that gets Tom Holland the black suit. They've done weirder stuff before in MCU movies, so I I don't know. Well, does this mean Craven is going to be an MCU movie now? A lot of questions with this. Yeah, move. definitely builds up some hype. Very very good way to introduce it, I think. And I I hundred percent think it has to do, obviously, the Doctor Strange spell and stuff. I'm pretty sure they shot that recently, though, right? Like that's that's a reshoot type of scene. Feels like a reshoot scene because that's such an easy thing to just find some cabana hotel room set and just go in there for like two hours. And shoot that scene. It's so easy. Yeah, it, it feels the same for me with Black Widow with the uh, Falcon Winter Soldier post credit scene. Like that has to be, yeah. new, right? Because they had to shuffle so many things around, and it and it's perfect timing too for that scene to happen because the next thing coming up is what it's leading yeah. up to. I wonder if that would have been in that movie still if everything was still going to come out when it was going to come out, and then Morbius was going to happen, and then No Way Home was going to yep. happen. Overall, I thought this was a wonderful movie absolutely just nailed it it was great i can't wait for the next one so see that that's where i'm wondering with the toxin tease of how's that gonna work out because he's then? back in the ma in in the other timeline because i'm assuming at the end of no way home like all like the raimi and the web villains and heroes they're gonna go back in their own timeline right i would imagine i i can't i can't see them sticking yeah. around after the after the movie's over Unless it's unless it's all the way until Multiverse of Madness. Well, I would think too that maybe they don't know how many people got sent to the MCU. Oh, that could be like maybe they just don't know how many people got pulled over. 
Yeah, like they're only dealing with the immediate threat, which is those villains and the other spider man and then Venom's just kind of hanging in the back trying to figure out what's going on, so that's why he's not sent back immediately. That would make sense. I mean, I guess all I could say is I'm surprised Kevin Feige greenlit that. Yeah. They must have had some um, big talks uh, before that happened. Yeah, like I'm sure this was discussed during that interview um, where Emmy Pascal's like, oh yeah, you know, they share the same universe. And he's I like, just hey, love wait. that face he gives her. He's like, shut up. <laughs> He's so mad. He's just like, mm, no. Really interesting seeing uh, Amy Pascal's name on the front of this, too. I was just like, oh, bitch, she's still yeah, part of Pas- this. Pascal Pictures. Yep. yep. I will say, two of the things that I thought were kind of weird were that Carnage's powers had some weird power stuff in it. His tornado deal was really weird. <laughs> uh, and it, his hacker man. Oh, yeah, where he's able to just get onto the computer and just infect it. I was like, okay. I like how Cletus is like, uh, can you internet or whatever he said? And they, yeah, he just plugs into the Oh, yeah, like, like, you got any internets? <laughs> <laughs> that line was so perfect. I was like, yes, that's great. And the scene right then, yeah, too, was... brutal scene, because he just smashes the dude's head in. That scene is crazy. I was like, dang. Okay, I, I like Cletus. He's fun. Yeah, it didn't really feel like they limited that character too much for the PG-13 yeah, rating. Yeah, I, I felt like they did a good job of... Um, Making it feel pretty, uh, uh, like like the Joker from Dark Knight, like where they like let him still mm. have some really brutal moments, but you just didn't see any of it. Yeah, that I mean that was always a strong point in the first Venom too. Yeah, was like just the way they cut away was, is just perfect. Yep, like the pencil scene in Dark Knight. Yeah, like it cuts perfect. Or like the scene where he cuts the dude's face in half, like where he actually does the lip, oh, the, yeah. the mouth cut on him, like on the pool mm-hmm. table. Like it's good stuff. Yeah, I think uh, <clears throat> I think with that, that's really all I have to say for for this yeah, movie. Yeah, I think I think we got it. All all I can say is that Venom was excellent. I'm excited to see where they go with it. Uh, anything involving Spider Man and Venom at this point is uh, on the top of my list. Especially if they're planning more uh, collaborations with uh, Disney and then eventually getting Tom Holland over. Yeah, uh, as Spider Man for those yep. films. Because who knows? Maybe they they'll still stick with Spider Man and in a Craven movie. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I, I would love if that's where the Craven movie ends up going, like that that it is him hunting Spider Man. That that would be great. Yeah, and it's in the perspective of uh, Craven instead of Spider Man. Yep. Oh, that would be so good. That would be so good. And the whole movie's teasing like which Spider Man it is too. That would be a really good way to do it. But all right, guys, with that, I think it's safe to say we could go ahead and wrap up uh, this week's episode. Indeed. Yeah. So we'll be back to talk about What If for yep. sure when that ends uh, next week. Next week. Yeah, we'll be back. But while we wait for those, Jake, where can we find you at in the meantime? Uh, y'all can find me at anywhere on the internet at Corruption Cosplay with K's at the beginning of each of those. Uh, um, just been posting a bunch of Superman photos from a Superman photo shoot I've been uh, that we that I had the pleasure of being a part of about a month ago, and all the pictures have just been coming out so good. Yeah, they're nice. Yeah, so uh, some big Christopher Reeve love uh, going on over there on the page. Um, <laughs> I don't know when the next photo shoot I'm getting in is going to be. Uh, I'm hoping to do a Doctor Strange and Shang-Chi one soon. We were, we were hoping to do a combo of that. So um, if that happens, it'll be on my Instagram page. And also always check out uh, Shattered Past over at Crimson Vision Studios. Uh, we're currently still in the writing phases of the next episode. Um, but they've been, they've been shooting stuff. Uh, and we're just trying to figure out where I'm going to be fitting in. Uh, so we'll figure it out. And once there's updates on that, uh we'll talk about it here so yeah nice. uh danny where can we find you yeah as always you can find me at negator seven anywhere you go and then uh, the other podcast unverse podcast uh, i mainly do uh manga reviews over there every week and then um I- i'll be streaming more often on twitch it's october so i think i'm gonna hit the spooky games nice. and then as always uh, you can email us at marvel talk podcast at gmail.com and you can follow us on instagram at marvel talk cast And that'll be all today, guys. So thank you for listening. And as always, we are Venom.